Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to curriculum week. So this whole week, I am going to be sharing my curriculum choices for the 2023-2024 school year. For all four of my kids, I'm gonna to start today with family subjects, and then I'm gonna go through fourth grade, third grade, and kindergarten. So it's gonna be a fun week, but like I said, we are gonna start with family subjects. So I do have a bit of a caveat here. I don't put all four of my kids into family subjects. It's just a personal preference. I might change my mind throughout the year, but as of right now, I have split them into two groups. My big kids, which at the time when we start homeschooling this year, they'll be nine and eight, and then my twins who are five. So they're just in their own separate category. So that's how I'm gonna discuss things in today's video in the family subjects video. So stay tuned and we'll get into all the curriculum. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back. All the things. I'm just so excited to get into this video and chat with you all about my curriculum. But first I do have to mention the fact that Sunlight kindly gifted me this curriculum for my honest review, which is the plan for this entire year. I'll be sharing monthly videos about how all of this curriculum is working. And so stay tuned for all of that. But like I said, family subjects. So in my homeschool, what does family subjects mean? It means history, Bible, literature, as well as science. And so we primarily use the Sunlight curriculum to teach those subjects. And the only one of all four of those subjects that I am thinking of combining all four of my kids is Bible. I just feel like all the resources that Sunlight gives us for Bible as well as reading the actual Bible is really useful for all ages. And I'm trying to work out exactly how I'm gonna do that. So I'll share that in a bit, but everything else is split out. And so in today's video, I'm just gonna share with you kind of the big chunks of resources. There's so much on my table, you guys can't see it. And it's, it's all right here and it's all fantastic and I'm so excited, but I'm going to do in-depth flip throughs of the programs later in the summer so you can see through the instructor's guide, so you can see all the resources. I will be doing that. Today, I just wanna share with you the plan. So let's start with my big kids. So for my big kids, and again, they're gonna be nine and a half and eight come like end of July, early August, when we start the school year. And we are using Sunlight HBLC as well as Science C. So let me get some resources. All right, guys, so for history, we are gonna continue studying world history. And in terms of Sunlight programs, that's the intro to world history. We are doing year two of two. And time-wise, that is covering kind of the fall of Rome to modern times. So it's a big stretch of time. And so my kids are really excited to kind of get the full breadth of history this year. And so some resources for that is we have some of our spines that we actually used last year when we did HBLB, which I just made a really detailed review on that. I can link it above. But here are the spines. We are gonna be using some Us Born books as well as A Child's History of the World, which we have really enjoyed. So those are some of our main history books. But we also have really enjoyed the hands-on history kits. And I have a full review on this as well. This just helps my kids really get in touch with the history and kind of have a tactile hands-on approach to it where they make a bunch of crafts and it's always linked to what we're learning. And so it's just a wonderful extra for our history program. And so then when you're talking history, the timelines are amazing. Like my kids have really enjoyed using the same timeline book for multiple programs. Like we've done American history. And then, like I said, we did year one of two of Intro to World History last year. And so they have all of their timeline stickers in here. And then they'll be adding the new timeline figures for this upcoming year. And so these will be great. And they'll just be able to continue with their timeline. And I really do like including timelines. It does not feel like busy work to me just because it really adds to the depth of the learning. So we'll have timeline figures. But then when it comes to kind of history, sunlight, tags geography on with history and i think it makes a lot of sense because within teaching history um, you're talking about different places in the world right so you can pull out the globe you can pull out the big markable map as well as the small maps and so within the instructor guide there are these small maps that you can use to initially find stuff like for instance within the instructions it'll say oh we're looking at japan which is c4 on map two and so you can find it here they can find it using the coordinates and then we can look at the big map or even the globe. We bring out both. But what I like about this year for geography is a couple other resources. So this I feel like is kind of a Bible and geography resource. 
it's gonna be both. And this is such a beautiful resource. I feel like so many homeschoolers use this and I'm so glad it's part of our curriculum and it's Window on the World, an Operation World Prayer resource. And so you, I believe, read about different people groups and some of their needs, but also study the geography as to where they are located. And then this year is the year when we're gonna start trying to memorize different locations and learn those, do more map work, as opposed to just finding things, which I think is wonderful, but I like that we're having a more intense kind of study on geography. And so this includes a CD of Psalms and some maps and various resources here in this book. So I'm glad the program takes a bit of a deep dive into geography this year. So that's history and geography for HBLC. So Bible is here. I'm so excited for this Bible, you guys. So this is the first year for Sunlight where there's a parent reading and a student reading. And so the parent reading obviously is from my Bible. And there is just a specific sections we're going through. And it talks about that in the instructor's guide, which I'll highlight when I do that flip through, which I think it's just, it's really good to know kind of what the plan is, how all of these verses are linked together in a way. And then there is this book. So this is Discover's Bible, a large print Bible for early readers. So this is great. So this will be what my kids can read from because like I said, my kids are very close in age. So their reading level is very similar. So I'll probably have them bounce back and forth reading from this book or their own books because we recently got them early reader Bibles. So we might just have them read from that book or maybe this one, I'm not sure. But I like that there's both parent and student readings. And then there's some other resources so that we're gonna continue memory work. And so this is the CD with all the Psalms that hook up with the memory work. And then there's always missionary books. And this one is included in more the literature, but I tend to talk about it more with the Bible. And this is with two hands, true stories of God at work in Ethiopia. So we like these books and then we love these Christian heroes then and now. So we're doing Gladys Aylward. And okay, so the most exciting part of the Bible curriculum is the new resources. Guys, they got new resources this year for almost all of the levels. This one is talking with your kids about Jesus. 30 conversations every Christian parent must have. And this is technically written to the parents, but what Sunlight says is it's easily read out loud. So it's gonna be just a good talking point, like a jumping off discussion book, which I'm so excited. So those are the Bible resources. And then it comes to literature, which I just, I love the literature. So I'm just gonna hold up the stack. And like I said, I'll do a big flip through later on. And there's some real popular ones in here, like Penderwicks. A lot of people have read that out loud. So these are read alouds. I meant to say that. There are readers that can come with your HBL, but the readers are also associated with the language arts, which we do use. So I tend to talk about the readers when I talk about the language arts. But as for some of these books, yeah, see there's the Cricket in Times Square, another popular one. There's Sticks Across the Chimney. So some of these are more historical, Red Sails to Capri, The Door in the Wall. So these are more historical read alouds. And then there's ones that are just fun. So the school story, as well as we're gonna do some Aesop's fables and some poems. So it's a lot of resources. I'll go through them more later. But this is what we're going to do during our couch time when we're reading together. These are our read alouds. So that's HBLC, history, Bible, literature. Lots of good stuff. It definitely is a step above the HBLB. I feel like there's just more resources or the books are bigger. So that's kind of fun. So now I'm gonna move on to science and I brought all of my stuff over here. So science books, Sunlight has wonderful ones. and. They range in the type of book they are, which I really like. So you can go from stuff like here, maybe seems like this is the main spine. So this is a DK, did you know science? Amazing answers to more than 200 awesome questions. So this feels like one we're gonna be using all year long. And then there's more specific ones like this one, looks just beautiful. Bringing back the wolves, how a predator restored an ecosystem. I think this is talking about Yellowstone. And I grew up in Montana, and so I remember when all this was happening when I was growing up. And so I'm really jazzed to read that. And then they always have a science biography. So this is like a scientist. This is Tesla and electricity and things like that because that's one of the main topics for Science C, which I forgot to mention that. But great resource. And then some other ones. We have some more like DK books and 
some us born books inventions i always order the five day for science just because i love it so much and then i really really do love the science experiments and so we have the experiments that come for science c are this first this big instructor's guide it's fantastic and then all of the supply kits so i really couldn't do science without this kit especially in the younger years especially because i'm going to try to do two science curriculums from sunlight this year that's where i'm holding it a little loosely but i feel like in terms of what i'm holding loosely it's more the kindergarten stuff this stuff for my nine and a half year old and eight year old i want to be more intentional with so i really want to try and get as many science experiments done as we can and my kids are really looking forward to it this year. It has a lot to do with electricity and weather, and I forgot the other topic, but that is science C for my big kids. So that was only half of the resources for family subjects for my family. I know it seems like a lot, but we love it. My kids love all the books, I love all the books. So let me get into my kindergartners. So for my kindergartners, we are doing HBLK and science K. Now the HBLK has been revamped this year. It is now the intro to world cultures, which I'm really excited about. And so let me just kind of hop into all of that. So for history, we're studying world cultures. So, so it's a lot of fun books here. We are gonna be using this one quite a bit, the Usborne Children's Encyclopedia. This is so worn, we've used this so much. But also some other resources, Living Long Ago, Out of Darkness, so that has to do with Braille. And it also comes with a map. And same ideas, you can kind of find the different places. Since we're doing world cultures, we're gonna be traveling the globe. So it'll be really fun to give them more of that tangibleness to it. And then I did pick up the timeline books for them. So these are brand new timeline books. I have always decided to get them their own so they can build their own timeline book throughout their sunlight time. And they can just see how all the different levels and all the different history topics really overlap. So we have all of that as well as also a hands-on history kit for intro to world cultures. This is so cute. There's like a catapult and different things that we're gonna be building together. So for my big kids, I did get two kits, one for each of them. For my twins, we're gonna share. They don't need one for each of them. I have a feeling I'm going to be helping them more with it. And my big kids, I'm gonna be handing it more to them and having them follow the instructions and stuff. That's what we have for history for my twins. And then the Bible for the twins. So there are resources. There's a Bible storybook, the Ergemeyer's Bible storybook that I can read to them. So this is the subject, again, that I'm not sure if I want to read to two different programs or if I want to modify. Like I was thinking maybe I could take the memory verses from HBLC and shorten them for my kindergartners. Or I might even do something like in the fall, we're gonna follow the schedule for HBLB and in the spring, we're gonna follow the HBLK schedule. I'm not sure, but I do know that we have more than enough to pull from. And I will probably keep you updated as to how exactly I do that. But there's also a CD that goes with that. And there's a few missionary stories. Again, these are more scheduled in the literature, but I like to put them in Bible. So that's H, B, now L, literature. What's fun about this is these books, these literature books used to be part of the HBL K American History, which I did with my big kids two years ago. So we have read a lot of these books and my twins sat through that, but they were like three at the time. So do they remember? Probably not. So we're gonna try and reread. I'll keep you updated in my monthly updates as to how like engaged they are, or maybe they'll really like it because they've already heard it somewhat. But I think my big kids are gonna love the fact that we're revisiting some of these books. There's some favorites. They really loved like the dolphin adventure books. They loved, we loved Roxy and the Hooligans. We have some family jokes from that. Humphrey is good. Boxcar Children, my big kids are currently reading to themselves. My Father's Dragon. I mean, there's so many good ones in here. There's actually a couple that were dropped. So these two were in the program before and now they're not, but um, we still have them and I'll probably find a time to read them. If not, maybe over the summer or something. And then they did just add a couple new ones. So Anna Hibiscus, which we have read for a prior program. It's so funny that includes some twins. And so I think it'll be perfect for my family. And then this one, Franklin Endicott and Third Key. So 
some new books, which will be really fun, as well as all of the poetry and some feelings and please and thank you manners type books for my kindergartners. So I remember when I was reading these resources before that it does not take that much time. And so it's perfect for these ages. All right, so I put those away. Moving on to Science K. So this is the science for my kindergartners. And you guys, my kids love science. I mean, I love science. I'm a scientist. I have my PhD in science, but I have two kids my daughter who's almost eight and then one of my twins just loves science and he could just sit there and look at all these books like he has been looking through these books for ages and so these are some of the books that are part of science k and they're very good basic books so there's another kind of spine book so dk find out science pretty basic and then you have some of these like us born small hardback books about just different topics that's gonna be great. And then you have just different ones. So what I love is you learn about something in say the spine book, and then you go a little deeper into some of these other resources and there's some more, but I just love it. And then there are experiments. So like I said, I'm gonna try and do two science curriculums instead of combining, which I contemplated combining. But what I love is so these are the instructions again this is discover and do i love the updated versions because they follow more of the standards they're very well thought out and it has to do with a lot of like critical thinking and designing experiments and things like that and it's just really fun and then of course i also have the kit because i couldn't do this without the kit so i have the kit and the experiment books but what i do have for science k that i do not have for science c is the online videos. So Sunlight does make videos for their science program. These videos are fantastic. They're really funny. I will put out a review video once we get a little further into the school year as to what I think about Science K. But my plan is, is it gives me something to utilize. So like I could let the twins just watch the video. We could do the experiment or if we don't have time that week, they'll just watch it. And the guy who is really funny can explain what's going on and show them how it would have worked out. So in a way it's my backup plan. Like in the past, I've used the videos to kind of watch and do the experiments with, but it gives me more options. So I'm really happy about that. So you guys, so history, Bible, literature, science for my kindergartners now. Like I said, I'm holding this part very loosely for them, especially. I'm going to be sharing here in a couple days their skills subjects, their individual subjects. Those are the things I'm gonna be more focusing on for kindergarten. Those are the more important things. I know that, I've always operated that way, but I like having resources. I like that my kids get excited by these things and they are so very excited, you guys. So that's the plan for family subjects for my kindergartners, my twins, as well as the plan for my bigger kids doing all the Sunlight C resources versus the K resources. So I know it seems like a lot. And like I said, I will do a better flip through of these resources later in the summer. I just wanted to share with you my general plans for these together subjects for my family. So I hope you liked the video. Let me know down below your thoughts on these programs or even share with me what you're using because I love to hear that. And stay tuned for tomorrow's video, which will be fourth grade. And yeah, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you want to. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Take care.